Um, European entrepreneurs tend to take smaller steps because fa failing on a, on a smaller level is less painful than, than, falling, uh, than failing, in, in, in failing big. And that's, that's very logical. But the thing about it is, we, we also hear this, you know, think big, the bigger the failure, the more learning that you're going to have. This is, this is the approach that you see common with all these big successful entrepreneurs. They're not willing to compromise something for a short term win. They want to do something massive and big. And they know that they could be compromising a big, uh, big failure. So you know, figuring out what difference you want to make, what purpose that you have. And, and when, once you understand that, you need to realize that you need to get a lot of help. And this is the kind of help that is different than buying by hiring people. So if you want to make something big and change the world, if you want to, like I said, change education or something, and you have a new vision of how education could be offered, uh, you, 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 need to, you need to get a lot of people to help you. This is not just about hiring a team that's going to build the product or the service. Or, it's much bigger than that. So getting help, this is required by, by you know, talking to people and, and telling people what, what you're about to. And this, the thing about getting help that I found very interesting is, is it's, it's connected to what I, meant, what I, what I mentioned before. Uh, it's, it's our nature. Human nature, we like to help. As I said, it's in our DNA, our purpose is really to contribute and create value. And, you know, we all feel good if we, you know, help an, an older lady cross the street or the, the little kid who falls off the bicycle, put him back on the bicycle and get him going. We feel good about that. So it's, it's an automatic, in, in our DNA, it's, it's our human nature, we like to help. And if you have a big vision, you need a lot of help. So here's the good news. So we help the people we all like to help. And what we do is we help the people that we know first. So we help our spouses and our children and our neighbors. And, and this, is, this is what's, uh, you know, it's, it's in our nature to help. And when we see people needing help, if in this room right now there is a big, uh, disaster and, and, and there is the you know big ambulance out there and, and there's a big fire and we could only you know I'm driving that ambulance my job I could only fit five people in that ambulance the five people I'm gonna select from amongst all of you are gonna be the people who I know <coughs> if I have that option it's people help the people that they know first so so what, what I'm leading to here is is really an interesting argument that I've discovered here is you know if, if you have a big vision you need a lot of, lot of help. And if human nature is to help, therefore, it's like everybody in the world is potentially want to help you. And people help the people that they know first. So then, then the conclusion to this is the more people know me, the more help I'm going to get. So, so this is the simple argument about it's, it's not about who do you know, and it's not about what do you know, it's about really who knows you. So, the summary of this is, is you know, the more you tell your vision, the more you share your story, the more interested in, you are in, in telling what you care about, the more people are likely to want to help you, and the more you're going to get connections, and people are going to say, okay, so-and-so might be interested in helping you with this, and, and have all this feedback that you get, where the common, the common thinking that I see that comes against this in, in Europe is many entrepreneurs have this fear of if I share my vision, if I tell you what I'm, I'm going to do, you're going to steal my idea. That doesn't really happen. Stealing ideas, you know, it happens later after ideas are developed and people try to copy you. So it's not about the stealing the idea. If you are if your idea is something that you understand completely and, and you connect with, no one's going to do it better than you are. You know, Facebook was not a new idea. Just it was executed better than anybody else. And, uh, you know, Starbucks did not invent coffee or, or eBay didn't invent auctions. Those were ideas that they existed, but the, the founders really understood 
what it takes, how to make these ideas, how to make these, these services most optimum, and how to make the, create the value in it. So understanding the kind of pain that, that you have, the more you understand the kind of, the, the, you know, what problem that you want to solve, the better the solutions that you will provide for it. If you notice, a lot of the best products are created by founders who understood the problem themselves. Um, you know, it's more, more often than not, Twitter was founded by, by uh, there's a question here? No? The, Twitter was found, you know, was created by a failed company that they were using a tool. They created Twitter just so they could share ideas amongst themselves as they work on a new product. Twitter started, you know, on, on, on a death of another company called Audio that was a podcast that basically killed. Apple put iTunes with podcasts and that, I, that, that company was doomed. So the founders were looking for good ideas and they thought, how do we keep collaborating and share ideas amongst ourselves? And how about we send text messages and create this little service and then their friends start using it and then you have Twitter. So it's understanding how, you know, what it, the problem here is how do we communicate really good things amongst each other without writing long emails? And, and that's what, what led them to this. So the more you understand the problem, the better the, better the product that you're going to build. And you know, understanding, understanding problem meaning really constantly learning. This is, this is the, the ready, shoot, aim, and, and the pivoting, and all of these phrases that you hear, and, and uh, changing, and, and getting customer feedback, and the customer development model. All these things are mechanisms for you to understand that the problem that you're solving is something that you really, you're getting deeper and deeper and deeper and better understanding about it. So it's a constant learning process. And, and the constant learning comes from, from the customers. And it comes from making the mistakes. It, take, it comes from make, taking actions and, and seeing the, 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 the output that you create with that action. And it comes from connecting with successful people and mentors, advisors who've helped, who, who've, who've gone through this path, getting feedback, getting input from them. Again, none of these people are going to have the right answer. These are not the people who have answers for you. Those are the people who are going to have input, perspective. Your job as the founder is to find the answer. Your job as the founder, because you understand this problem better than anybody else, is to distill all this information. You know, what I'm telling you today is just like my opinion about what I've seen. It's not necessarily exactly you know, what you should adopt. It's, it's what, you, what, you, what you conclude. Your job is really to, to, to train your own, your own confidence, your own guts, your own intuition to, to knowing what are these right answers. So connecting and getting feedback from the customers and getting feedback from, from good mentors and, and getting feedback from reality is one way of doing that. So the, the three things that basically that uh, you know I'm, I'm just want to summarize this with is get out of town. It's just get out of your comfort zone. Go to a place of where you feel like you're, you're, you're committed to doing this, and this is the only thing you're doing. Uh, Chile uh, in uh, Latin America started a new program called Startup Chile a few years ago, about three years ago, four years ago. And it was a very interesting program because what they've done is they offer, uh, I believe, $40,000 free with no equity or anything for any entrepreneurs from anywhere around the world. Move to Chile. We will give you $40,000 in spending. We will teach you Spanish if you need. We will give you workspace and all of that just to set up shop in Santiago, Chile. And people in Chile were like, why are you doing this to the foreigners? We, you know, why don't you do this to the people of, of, of Chile? And they were, you know, it, was, it was not necessarily received well initially inside of Santiago, but they, they, they proceeded with it. And the outcome was excellent, because what it did is it brought people from outside of Chile who were willing to take this risk. It was more like a, you know, they, they put their life on hold for six months. They took out of the, the, the distraction that could be available to their life in their hometown and in their current lives. And they dedicated this time to work on these, these startups. So in the last three, four years, they've seen some really good traction and these good companies come out of that. The better part of it is those entrepreneurs get to meet the local Chilean and San Diego people. And, and those people were inspired. It's like, 
what's, what is she has that I don't have? You know, I could do it. She started this idea with this product and, you know, I could do the same thing. So they get more of the people who get inspired with that and they help nurture their own ecosystem. So this is where I'll stop with my talk. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll take any questions that you may have. We have like three minutes. Thanks. We have three minutes on the clock. And I'll take the next question. The one after? The one after? No? OK. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great question. So, so the distinction here is that these things are not binary. It's not about just building a product and getting to investors. There's so many things that happens between the idea and building a product. And investors are not just the person who are the professional investor who's going to write you million dollar checks. So, so look at these two concepts as spectrum. So you look at it as the first stage is the, the first the, the the rule of thumb that I recommend, again, it's my opinion, is to delay investment as much as possible. Push it away as much as possible. That means I, you know, I've saved some money, I could survive for three months. Uh, three months is not enough to build a product. But uh, how long do I need to build a product? We need a year. Well, I, I can't survive for a year, okay. What do I could do in between? Maybe I build a prototype. Maybe I validate something. Maybe I go and show that there's a problem, that this really is the right solution for it. So building a product is various stages that you're going to go through. So if, I, if you go on that path, and then you figure out certain milestone for yourself, it's going to take me six months to build, or nine months to build a prototype. And now I could survive for three months. I need money for another six months. Where do you go for that? The first source that you could go to for funding is friends and family, or the three Fs. Friends, family, and fools, and fadi. Uh, so, so the first source is your friends and family. Those are the people who, who know you. They trust you, they want to help you, not because they want an upside on their investment, they want to help you because they want to see you accomplish your vision. And they believe in you. So that's what you go and you say, okay, I need 20,000, whatever, to survive this period. So now you have, you know, you figure out if you need 20,000, uh, the way I recommend is, is to get like one and a half that time. Uh, you know, if you need six months, 50,000, that means, you know, get about 70,000. Raise a l one and a half time more than what you think. And reach those milestones. So, so this is the, you know, the fundraising. And then you have something to show to maybe business angels who would invest a little bit, again, for the next milestone. You want to go to VCs only after you have reached a product market fit. VCs, VC money, they want to take 20, 30% of your company to scale. They need you to be in business, generating revenues, figuring it out. And they say, OK, we're investing now three, four million dollars or more because we're going to expand on sales marketing. We're going to expand on a product team. So, so the VCs are looking at it for scale. This is the role of the VC. Now, not all products could be revenue generating in a year. But you need to break down where the validation of this value creation feedback is, is measurable. And you could show a certain number of users where your monetization might not be, you don't even know what it is, which is fine. If, if the vision is creating some value that you believe that it's going to be, it, it, you know, it's going to change people's lives. It's going to make an impact. That answer? You're welcome. Right there, we have. It. 
Even this microphone ball is awesome idea. This is a guy, I'm, I'm learning stuff here. Yeah. Um, yesterday is the time. So you quit. If you commit to building the product, you need to quit. You cannot do two things. I mean, you cannot. Uh, no, no, I didn't oh, when do you quit? Oh, okay. Uh, when do you quit your startup idea? That's a really difficult, uh, you know, difficult question to answer. And, and um, you know, if you if you have a belief and you're working towards something, you're not getting the validation, you're not getting the value from the world that you believe it's going to go, uh, but you're still trying and you're still trying. Um, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, I don't believe, I don't think you should quit. You just change strategy, you keep changing strategy, but then, you, you know, you don't want to starve to death. But, you know, as long as you push it, I mean, that's, it's a very difficult uh, place to be. It, it's a questioning is, how committed are you to this outcome that you wanted to create? And, you know, maybe sometimes quitting is a temporary. You say, okay, I'm going to step back, go earn some money for six months, or do it again. Or I'm going to try in the next six months if I could reach this kind of feedback, if I could, you know, identify certain kind of uh, results. They don't have to be spectacular, but if I could, you know, that's an indication for me that I could push forward with it. Okay, thank you all and have a nice afternoon.